Could you please tell me what's going on behind you at the moment? Where are we now? We are now in a volunteer um, coordination center, which is like a pop-up center, which was created just uh, today is the fifth year work, uh, four days ago. Uh, it was created by uh, the volunteer and uh, public figure Sergei Pritula. Uh, why, uh, why now? Why is this type of center? Because he has been doing volunteering with many other people, volunteers, for already eight years, since 2014. And um, now, uh, as, as, you, as you see, uh, the time calls, yes, for quick actions, and uh, people know how to volunteer and how to procure army uh, without the help of the state. I understand. And what are people bringing to, yeah, to here? Okay. What are so, they bringing? Uh, we can see here the boxes of uh, some pharmaceutical company, which is uh, like here. Yes, so in bulk they bring a lot of, um, a lot of medicine. You can see uh, here, for example, some covers brought by some civilians, so like two or three of them. You can see mats brought there also by some small business. Uh, which, of course, uh, they won't go uh, far away to the front because it's fresh food, but they are given to the volunteer fighters here in Kyiv. So this is also brought by some other business. Um, people bring something like in small quantities, like three walkie-talkies or six walkie-talkies. Some, uh, somebody brings like ten drones, which are very expensive, but people are ready to give it you know, and say, like, uh, listen, uh, we are ready to do everything uh, to defend our country, and what we can do is contribute to this. So, so this is the ground the zero of the civilian resistance in Kiev? Uh, kind of like, yes, uh, but uh, one moment had to be uh, made clear. Oh, oh, what a nice dog. Whose dog is this? <laughs> um, so you see the atmosphere of love and joy is here. And it, yet, yet we are in a war zone. And yeah, yeah. And uh, actually, if you're here you feel much more confident and much more calm. So uh, back to uh, what you asked. And I was asked asking if this is the ground zero, ground zero. of, yeah. uh, of civilian, Ukrainian uh, civilian resistance in Kiev. Uh, in a way, yes, but uh, what we need to understand is uh, this is the headquarters which helps volunteer fighters, which are called territorial defense. And territorial right yeah. it was uh, created by the state by the, uh, but the state uh, can't give you know anything uh, can't procure everything important to these people so they give the weapon yeah uh, and that's it everything else for example uh, bulletproofs uh, helmets food uh, walkie-talkies again lights uh, whatever you name it everything uh, people need while combating yes but the state can't give it to them I understand so we did a story on libertata last week okay with the Tereo okay. unit uh, and we stayed with them. Let me ask you one last question. I know you're very busy. I'm not going to... Um... No, no, no. It's okay. Any questions you need? <laughs> I just uh, want to ask you, what is the feeling of people in Kiev on the streets? What, what is the general atmosphere? We just arrived here and we see a city that is completely deserted. What, what is your feeling? What, what do you make of all this, of the situation? Uh, you know, it takes uh, half a day to... Uh, change the peaceful city, bustling megapolis, into the city at war, ghosted city at war. And this is what happened five days ago, and now when I see the streets, I see, you know, these barricades, I see Ukrainian military standing there, and I see uh, a little or no people, no civilians walking there, I feel, you know, a little bit terrified and asking why, how, how did it even happen? Nobody could even imagine that it would happen. But uh, people are, you know, very, uh, have really very different ideas. For example, some of them, if you ask them, uh, hey, you're about buying food, uh, how are you feeling these days? People are saying, oh, I just buy food because, you know, uh, they told us to do this. I'm not panicking. I know that Putin uh, will be defeated not in a long time. So Putin and uh, such stuff, they say, so they feel completely confident. Some people really understand that, oh, that's war, what to do, what shall I do? So the ideas are really different. And what is the main idea I see among uh, other people, among my um, friends, relatives, people from my, you know, um, environment, 
is that everybody is very confident in armed forces, so there is no ideas like, oh, maybe we are not capable of uh, doing this, maybe we won't be able to defeat the uh, uh, Russian army, which is supposed to be one of the greatest armies, yes, in the world, at least somebody, at least Putin thinks so. No, here people like very calm and understanding that, huh, it's armed forces of Ukraine. We have been at war for eight years. We are professionals. Volunteers are already professional volunteers, and everything will be fine. And the reports prove this: that uh, the Ukrainian army does uh, very effectively the defense and everything. Which is people arriving now, right? Yes. Yeah, so We're seeing people arriving with the donations. You see, like, oh, it's a bit from here to here, you know? Yeah, try that. Because uh, people bring tea. But it's really done. People bring uh, covers, coats. You see some some people are bringing uh, small boxes with something, some bringing a lot of boxes. Do you, do you think um, people in Kiev... Um, will resist in the case of a Russian, massive Russian attack on the capital. Are, are, are you worried about the city might be falling at least for a while under Russian control? How, what's, the, what's your opinion? According to what I see, what fellow Ukrainians do in other cities, they just come to the streets with uh, Molotov cocktails, you know, with uh, whatever they have, with weapons they have, uh, and they just make Russian tanks go just scare Russian things. I'm for sure, I, 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 I don't even doubt this thing, that people in Kyiv will do the same thing. And they already do this, because there are Russians here and there, not like um, in the city, all over the city, but here and there you see on the outskirts of the city. Nobody even understands, uh, no, not understands, but nobody really can uh, say that, oh, if Russians come, Russians won't come to the volunteers and the army and the volunteer fighters Tero, are here to do this, to defend and not to make uh, Russians, uh, let Russians, you know, in the city. So that's for sure. And this morale is what it seems to me keeps everybody up and uh, not in disbelief and despair, but ready to fight. I understand. What's your full name? Maria. Maria. Pisarenko. With Y? P-Y-S-A-Renko. Renko. And how old are you? 23. 23. Yeah. And what's your occupation when you're like... I'm, yeah, I'm a media advisor to Serhii Pritula, who is uh, the mastermind behind this uh, volunteer education okay. center. So you're the media spokes one of the media spokesperson for Tereo. Can we say that? Uh, no, well, not true, because Tereo is like a huge body of people, okay. and I'm only for this... Uh, is one of the media spokesperson for this center? Will that... For this center, okay. yeah. I'm and where is this center located in Kiev? Uh, I think that we shouldn't say like okay. the exact name. No, but what, but what neighborhood? Old Town Kiev. Old Town yeah. Kiev, yeah. I understand. That's, that's, uh, would be, uh, okay, Diakui Maria, Diakui, thank you very much. I also 